What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all are having a great Tuesday so far. Hope you all are having a great work week. Uh, we're going to continue to talk about the tropics as we have two areas actually we're watching out for. One, obviously, being what could potentially be Tropical Storm Fred. Guys, I'll be honest, I think most of everybody thought this would be labeled Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, earlier today, it was looking like the healthiest tropical wave I've ever seen. Uh, it's not even te technically labeled a tropical depression or anything right now. Still potential. Tropical Cyclone 6, PTC 6, so we're still labeling it that. But by the time a lot of y'all watch this uh, video, there's a chance this is going to be Tropical Storm Fred. In fact, it could get upgraded to that here in the next hour when we have the 8 p.m. update. I'm making this video before the 8 p.m. update. Hurricane Hunters are actually flying in to this uh, disturbance right now as uh, the low-level circulation is actually just south of Puerto Rico, which we're about to show um, but we're going to break this thing down. We're going to go over a lot of data in this video. So uh, stay tuned if you're interested. I uh, invite you to subscribe. Definitely hit the subscribe button. Like the video. I make content every single day. And uh, just try to bring you all the most up-to-date uh, information. And I normally upload every evening. I also storm chase. So I don't just talk about the weather. I plan on getting out in every major weather event possible. I'm not made of money. But I, I try to get out there. So uh, keep that in mind too. Um, if you're uh, leaning on subscribing or not, but I do storm chase also. So y'all support is definitely appreciated. And thank y'all for the amazing growth of the last, especially week. Um, I've gotten a lot of growth, so thank y'all. Uh, and uh, if y'all got anything I can pray about, please put in the comments. Anything anybody else can pray about, put in the comments. Gives everybody an opportunity to pray for you, including me. If it's unspoken, just put that, and I got y'all's back. Uh, we're a big family in here, so thank y'all for the support. So here you go. We got this big vigorous tropical wave moving right here. You got what will soon likely, even the National Hurricane Center is saying it's likely going to be Tropical Storm Fred overnight. So like I said, by the time some of you all watch this, it'll be Tropical Storm Fred. We get a closer up look of what is going on with this system. Um, it is not a vertically stacked system. Uh, and typically when uh, tropical systems are labeled what this is labeled, which is a PTC-6, a potential tropical cyclone. I'm trying not to say that too much because it'll begin to get just elongated and annoying. Um, it's still de dealing with dry air. It's created its own air mass to a degree, but the low-level circulation is separated from the mid-level circulation. So it's not vertically stacked. You need both of them kind of on top of each other, if you will. Uh, well, mid-level over the low-level, obviously, for this to be a healthy circulation, a healthy storm. Um, this was looking a little bit better a little earlier, but uh, this is what these storms tend to do. It's going to interact with Puerto Rico. It looks like the low-level circulation might interact with it a lot more. But down the road is what I'm really looking at as far as impacts for the U.S. If this thing can sneak into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and I'm going to talk about all that, this could really turn into potentially, potentially maybe a dangerous situation uh, for the south, the Gulf Coast. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. But right now, it's a starting to probably affect areas of Puerto Rico. Eventually, will definitely affect Hispaniola, where they have some big-time high mountain peaks. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens overnight for sure. But dry air is still what this system is dealing with big time, and it's about to be dealing with um, land interaction. But down the road, this could really affect the U.S. So here you go. This is the latest up-to-date, 5 p.m., like I said, 8 p.m., who knows? This might get upgraded to a tropical storm, be tropical storm Fred. I think at the end of the day, this is eventually going to get labeled tropical storm Fred, whether it's tonight, whether it's um, uh, over the weekend. It, this is going to be tropical storm Fred. So tropical storm warnings are up for uh, Puerto Rico areas, uh, basically the eastern areas of Hispaniola. Tropical storm watches up for the northern end of Hispaniola and then the uh, areas of the swell uh, southeastern areas of the Bahamas places like that so um, right now it's predicted to by the weekend by about you know Friday afternoon be on the northern coast of the middle of Cuba then uh, maybe by 2 p.m. a lot of model model guidance operational mo uh, guidance is actually different than the ensemble guidance ensembles have it much more west operational runs have it a little bit more east than the ensemble runs so but by 2 p.m. Saturday probably a, maybe a tropical storm off the southwest coast of Florida and if this takes this path, it's going to have a chance to become a hurricane before making impacts somewhere potentially along the Gulf Coast and maybe the Panhandle of Florida, kind of in the same Big Bend area. Maybe it's Tropical Storm Elsa made land, uh, landfall. But here you go. This is the latest 18Z at, uh, evening uh, line graphs here heading it into the Panhandle of Florida. That's where a lot of it have it heading into. Um, 
So it's going to be interesting, especially if this thing can get into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Sea surface temperatures are definitely supportive of intensification. Uh, all sea surface temperatures, basically in the tropical Atlantic, the western Atlantic, um, and the uh, Gulf of Mexico is very supportive of tropical development. You look at the latest intensity model guidance, uh, it has all of it just sitting in a tropical storm basically throughout the weekend. But I think this is going to have a chance to get to a hurricane. So we'll see. Hurricane hunters are flying into the storm right at this moment uh, to get the latest up-to-date information. It's going to be interesting to see what they find. Um, a lot of um, uh, decisions rely on the information they find in this. Uh, this could allow this to get updated to a tropical storm. Uh, the low pressure, they're not finding a very low pressure. In fact, um, on the latest update, the low pressure was not that low at all. Um, so we're trying to figure out what is this storm going to do. It, it really, we really are here. But um, the latest update here, it's, it's the low pressure is not that low. So um, it's, it's pretty high, actually. So it's still a, a, basically, it's kind of like a tropical depression. It actually has the look of, as we see, of a tropical storm on radar. Like, you know, you, you, you compare it to things like Tropical Storm Danny. Danny was uh, much more smaller than this, and probably uh, the weather was much less impactful. But they're just what the what the professionals are basically saying with this storm is there's not a lot under the hood, if you will. So the appearance on satellite looks great, but under the hood, it's not producing a lot of winds. Now this could change; they might be finding something a little bit different um, moving forward. But um, as the hurricane hunters get into the storm, but check this out right here. You look at this. This is a another tropical wave that has a 20% chance to develop, develop in the next five days. I will note, this tropical wave looks great out here, and I'll show you in a second, but the model guidance do not, does not like it too much as far as it developing, and I'll show you that in a second, but this is where the low-level circulation, low circulation is about as far as uh, where it is, and uh, in fact, it's probably a little bit updated. It's probably right in this area right now. We compare that, and give me a second. I'm going to pull up the radar here. It's probably going to take a, a couple seconds to uh, get moving for you. But uh, before this gets moving, you can actually look right here, and here it comes. Um, this is the low-level circulation right here. Actually might miss Puerto Rico barely. Um, there's a mid-level circulation right here. So a low-level circulation right here, in for mid-level circulation right here. Mid-level circulation is a lot of times when you have weaker storms where you have the most convection, the most, uh, basically, the more intense action. Um, the low level circulation, it's kind of exposed, if you will. Um, but you can make out what's going on here. There's no, it's not vertically stacked. You don't have right, these right on top of each other like you do in a well defined hurricane. So going forward, as you can tell, there's some bands moving into Puerto Rico. But outside of that, it's nothing that they can't handle out there. But this has a chance to, to get its act together before ultimately it makes some kind of landfall probably in Hispaniola here in the next 24 hours. But here's the tropical wave also. I'll look at this really briefly. Um, this is a good looking tropical wave way out in the Atlantic, um, kind of in the same area that what will be Fred was in. It's very good looking tropical wave, but a lot of model guidance does not like it too much. But we'll take a look at the latest GFS. What we're going to do is run through all the model guidance and uh, we're going to talk about the factors in place that can promote Fred to strengthen on down the road and uh, really talk about the steering currents kind of to a degree and also talk about an upper level low that's also going to provide some shear in the path of what looks to be Tropical Storm Fred. So um, here we go. Moving forward, we this is just the operational GFS. Um, it moves over parts of Hispaniola, probably the eastern areas of the islands. If it doesn't move over the higher terrain of the islands, the low level circulation doesn't, then I think the impacts of the storm in general will be a little bit less, but either way, it's moving over land. Uh, the tropical wave gets going. It's cruising, all the tropical moisture is cruising on the southwest areas of the Bahamas and northern end of Cuba. Moving forward, this energy finally pulls into a much better atmosphere, which is right here at a, as an upper level low is pulling away, and there's just adequate uh, sea surface temperatures here in the Florida Keys are probably pushing the upper 80s near 90 degrees. So when you lessen the dry air and you lessen the um, shear, you're probably uh, going to have some kind of intense strengthening. Not talking about rapid intensification, but you're going to have some kind of intensification going on here. As it making landfall on the southern tip of Florida, maybe is a low-end tropical storm, tropical depression. 
moves it up the entire Florida Peninsula, might sneak it back into the Gulf of Mexico where it might can strengthen again, makes landfall again in the Florida Panhandle, and then brings a lot of rain early next week into Georgia and the Carolinas, potentially. That's a scenario. When these storms like to make impact in the Florida Panhandle, it likes to bring a lot of nasty weather into the southeast, especially Georgia into the Carolinas, where a lot of times the eastern ends, the eastern halves of these storms are the most dangerous, kind of like what else that happened, produced a few tornadoes and some nasty conditions in the Carolinas and Georgia. You look at the, um, uh, the a broad view here, and you take a look at the tropical wave, which is supposed to be right here, it doesn't have a developing really at all. Now on down the road as that piece of energy gets going, and to, closer to the Lesser Antilles, maybe it pops something off. And check it out, you have what will be Fred right here. And uh, kind of takes the same path, exact path a little bit as what our system right now is. But it kind of gets lost in the landmass. Does it kind of reemerge itself somewhere? Is this the energy right here? Who knows? This is over 10 days out, so we just don't know. We'll take a look at the GFS ensembles. Check out the cluster right here over Hispaniola as we get into... Um, Thursday morning or so, overnight tomorrow into Thursday morning. Notice the clusters stay together, but eventually they start to spread apart. And this is basically, I think, 30 to 31 different runs put together. Um, so this is obviously isn't a bunch of storms right here, but notice how the guidance spreads apart. Then you have some stronger storms that maybe splits off the eastern coast of Florida. Some of them sneak off into the Gulf of Mexico. you got this wild one right here that has a uh, 977 low pressure, which is a, a pretty strong hurricane. <laughs> but uh, you have a lot of these members showing a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane. But it will be interesting to see how this happens and, and what exactly happens here. And uh, we'll try to figure that out. It does show guidance from the tropical wave. This is the tropical wave. It's picking up on a couple members. It has a strengthening tropical system going in. But uh, we're just not sure what's going to happen as far as that. You look at the European run. Uh, moving forward, it shows exactly where the system is, where the dark greens is. That's where you have your tropical system. Going forward, it finally gets an area of favorable conditions right here between Cuba and Florida. Um, has it a little bit more west than the GFS. Sneaks into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and uh, makes landfall kind of, maybe a little tick west of where Elsa made landfall. And this would be for probably uh, Sunday night. So the timing's a little bit different, but it really slows this system down. And just like what the GFS does, it pulls a lot of moisture and rain and nasty tropical weather into Georgia and to the Carolinas. So, um, you know, this is really looking like, regardless, this is going to get pulled into the U.S., even if it's just tropical moisture. Could it be a hurricane? Um, I think the ceiling in this, in this particular storm... Um, off what I know and what I see is a Category 1 hurricane. Now, that can be different. I think that's the ceiling of the storm right now. But check it out. You have the G, uh, the European ensembles. And uh, pretty much just focus on this right here going forward. All this is from the tropical wave energy. Um, check it out. A lot of it like, likes this storm going all up on the Caribbean islands and then getting into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. I think if it gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it has a chance to get to a hurricane. I really do. Um this is a wind stream lines and basically it's just showing us, it does a great job of showing where upper level lows are. So right here you have a little bit of upper level low that's been kind of just flirting with Florida over the last several days. Um, I actually took this piece off of uh, Levi's video from Tropical Tidbits. He, he does a great, great job of breaking everything down here. Um, but this is a basically a weakening upper level low. So as you get this tropical system that really starts to move up in this area right here, uh, you're going to have some shear. You compare, you back it up right here, you compare this upper level low piece with uh, shear right here. Let me get this moving a little bit. This is our system. This is our upper level low. It's providing some moderate shear right here. So not only is our tropical system going to battle uh, land interaction, it's also going to battle some shear from this upper level low interaction right here. So it's going to be a battle for this tropical system to survive. Now, I think regardless, the energy from this system is going to survive. When it does, it's going to have a chance right in here as this upper level low pulls away, as you can tell. Um, it's going to have a chance to get into a little bit better of an environment as this pulls away and have a chance to strengthen as it stops dealing with so much shear. But right now, right at this very moment, it's dealing with a lot of dry air. So 
You look at the sea surface temperatures right around the area where it can form, they are pushing the upper 80s. In fact, some areas buoys might be near 90 degrees. I'm not sure, but uh, this is probably going to get into this area where it gets into its most favorable conditions. And if it does, the sea surface temperatures are going to support some intensification uh, where this thing can really get going again. So, you know, looking forward, um, here it is. This is our system. I really think that um, the U.S. has a chance to be impacted by a tropical storm. Uh, late weekend into early next week. Hurricane? Yes, it has a chance. But I think in the meantime, this is probably going to develop into a tropical storm overnight into the morning hours. I know I said that last night. Everybody was thinking it was. But it just doesn't have a lot under the hood, if you will. The appearance looks great on satellite. But as far as what's actually under, now we're about to get more data from the hurricane hunters. Um, you know, it isn't quite a tropical storm. By the time some of you watch this, it definitely certainly could and probably will. Uh, but going forward, that's what we got now. You look at the latest uh, European SpaghettiOs, the ensembles. I like to show these. Picks up on the energy. Look, notice all of them going west into the into the Gulf of Mexico. That's something we got to watch. And then you picks up on the other wave behind it with a little bit of energy, but there's not a lot of members that like that. But it looks like we got some active times ahead, guys. That's all I got. Thank you all for the amazing support. And um, I'll keep you all updated. Like I said, by the time a lot of y'all watch this video, this could be Tropical Storm Fred. So um, make sure y'all remember that <laughs> because I, I don't want y'all to watch this and say, oh, it's a Tropical Storm. What are you talking about? Well, um, sometimes I have to do these videos a little bit before that 8 p.m. update. I, I try to do it right when that 8 p.m. update starts, and that allows me to get the latest up-to-date information. But I can't always do that. I want to get my video done and um, definitely go out and spend time with my family. So Thank you all for the amazing support. That's all I got. And y'all have a blessed evening.